Eshe Kodara Eshe Kodara Enia Eko Eshe Eshe Kodara Do it right, make it better when it is your turn. Do it right. <laughs> okay, and that's how we welcome us to The Leader and the Lead, African Poetry by Ni Oshindare. And for once, I want to say my name is Samuel Omoni Akinsumoye. And um, it's a pleasure welcoming you to our channel today, where we're going to be looking at The Leader and the Lead, one of the poems to be analyzed by students of literature, uh, Wyak, Neko, and Jam in uh, okay, uh, this year, uh, I think till 2025. And beyond the examinations, I think it is very uh, imperative of African nations, of the nations of the world, to understand this poem as we swing into it without much ado. Please come with us. Uh, the leader and the lead. The lion here is in the symbol of the leader and the antelope are a symbol of the lead. You know why? Uh, this tells us that the lion claims it is right to lead the pack. But when the people in the pack are to speak, what could they remember? But the antelope remember the ferocious pounds of his paws. Now, that tells you the antelopes are the people, are the lead. Okay? So the lead could only remember victimization, tyranny. They could only remember the lion, okay, that is symbolism. So the leader is in the symbol of the lion. The antelope is in the symbol of the lead. So what does that tell you? The prey. Okay, so that tells us what? A situation of what? The prey. The antelope is in the situation of the prey. So the lion, the, um, what's it called? Predator. Is that clear? So, and now the hyena says the crown is made for him. But the impalas shudder, you know, you, you, you shudder uh, at his little appetite. Now, you know, when you say something is little, it's very destructive. Okay? Now, more like it is insatiable. The, the hyena tend to have, uh, tend to not get enough of impalas. Impalas are like antelopes. All right? So, I think what Neo Shindari has been able to do here is, the citizens in your country might be different from mine, but they are not so different because they are still the lead. So antelope and impalas are closely related. They look very closely. All right. So, but then more like a different species. So more like different type of citizens, different types of lead. So Nigeria might be saying, okay, Nigerians are different from Americans, but no, Americans that are lead are still like impalas, while Nigerians are like antelopes. Ghanaians could be like the impalas, Cameroonians could be like antelopes. So, no matter how we won't say we're so different, we are still related. Does that make sense now? So, uh, and what these leaders are claiming that they be belong to them, the people could only remember negative things about the effects of these leaders as leaders. Okay? Now, the giraffe craves a place in the front, which is also wanting to be a leader. But what happens? But his eyes are too far from the ground. What does that tell you? Alienation, the leaders and the lead. You see, it, the ground talks about the lead, not like animals now, okay? The giraffe, the leader, the ground, the lead. So you see the distance, the class situation. So the lead cannot see the leader. The leader cannot see the lead. The leader does not even know what the lead are going through. He does not know their pain. So it's up there. Like you can see the, the, the giraffe here. For the lion itself to even be up to the height of the giraffe, he, you can see some sticks constructed. Don't mind that beautiful art anyway. Just to reinforce this. So we tend to understand. Are we on the same page? Okay. So when the zebra says it's his right to lead, the pack points to the duplicity of his stripes. Now, what does that tell us? The zebra is also saying, I am the rightful person to the throne. 
but that's fine. <clears throat> the only problem with the lead I have with uh, the zebra is now the lead now are categorically referred to as the pack. They can only talk about the fact that you have stripes that are not the same. So where do you belong? Are you white or black? Can you get it? So these are leaders that are neither here nor there. These are leaders that, like a president once said, I belong to uh, no one and I belong to everyone. Okay? So I am not here, I am not there. So these are people who come up with, say, dual identity. You don't really know what they stand for. Okay? You don't know, they, they've got no standard. All right? So they could be dubious. So that is what it means. We don't know who you are. We don't know what you stand for. You've got this duplicity of of symbolism. Now we have the symbol. Not this is these are not all the symbols. The next page we have some other symbols. But then let us just finish with this page, both for analysis and for literary devices. Okay. So the the lion. The lion does what stakes his claim. Now this word his. Yeah, tells of a lion. I, I don't know if you get me now. So the lion stakes his claim. Now, and this exactly tells the use of personification here. Okay? The word his talks about a male. Okay? And personification is giving human attributes to non human or to inanimate objects. Okay? So, ordinarily, we should be saying its claim. All right? But the lion stakes his claim to leadership of the pack. So the lion symbolism, his, is what? Uh, personification. So his claim. It's only humans that can make a claim. And only humans are addressed with his. Okay? Now, that is personification there. Let us look that if it's... Uh, runs through the poem. Remember, but the antelope remembers. The word remember also speaks of personification. Okay, so it is human to have memories. Okay, memories bring back, memories bring back you. Uh, that's by the way, sorry. Okay, so uh, uh, so this tells of what personification. The antelopes remember. Okay, so the ferocious pounds of his. Uh, the remember what the ferocious pounds of his. Uh, pause now this entire line all right let me pick another color to that uh, this entire line tells of what run on lines okay everything from this line into this talks of run on line but the antelopes remember the ferocious pounds of his paws so this is run on line but remember tells of what um, personification okay but then he's again is here and the he's here talks of still what personification i don't know if that's clear but then when you now say he pause very important that i need to do this uh just in this stanza we have this sorry it's looking like i crossed it out right but then you remember what is there is pause right but then the black indicates sinedo key the, the poet here has been able to use a part to represent the whole, okay? Saying that um, the ferocious uh, pounds of his paws. Now, that is more like saying what? The paws alone did the pouncing without the full lion doing it. Okay, don't forget. I know some of us will say, what is uh, Sinedo Ki? Uh, we tend to pronounce it Sine Dutch. okay? We check a dictionary. The transcription has the K. And then the E. So it's in Edo Kio, right? So um, let's get that straight. All right. So um, that's settled. We have in stanza two, we have personification. We have run online, also known as enjambment. And then we have sin Edo Kio. All right. I hope that's clear. So, and even the word ferocious is also personification. So let's just indicate it underneath. All right. Ferocious is also what? personification you can say it the pounce is ferocious 
it's humans that are ferocious all right so now to say the pouncing the action itself is ferocious you've personified the action all right so that's it so then we go to um the hyena says now this word says itself tells of what personification as well you see it so made for him personification again so in this line we have personification in the use of says for hyena saying meaning this that more like the hyena spoke and then the crown made for him more like a person so the but the impalas shudder at his this is another word personification his you see it little appetite so i hope that's clear enough personification running majorly so one of the dominant literary devices here will be what personification another will be uh, symbolism okay so we go further to see if there be any other okay uh, have i mentioned the use of um, alliteration in line uh, one stanza three in the hyena and uh, him okay so that is what what we call um alliteration repetition of a consonant sound at the beginning of words in a line of poetry so that is alliteration okay so without much ado let's just go on to say uh let me take us a bit back to the title the leader and the lead apart from having um symbolism in there for juxtaposition we have alliteration clearly right uh -huh. the leader and the lead okay so i think that's too simple the la repeated here and here but that's not all we have the the so uh this consonant sound like this you know kind of uh, 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 yeah with a cross here so it's been repeated here the the th here is the the same thing with what we have here okay but come to think of it this letter d here and the one and and the lead the da here this one it's not alliteration that is called consonance what is consonance consonance is the repetition of a consonant sound in the middle or at the end of words in a line of poetry all that is clear enough so let us leave it that way and proceed okay so the giraffe craves craving is for humans okay so that is personification as well uh the use of crave for giraffe has personified the giraffe a place in the front now front here is also what not a literal use of word here okay it is used literally to indicate leadership throne all right so craving for a place in the front meaning you want to be uh ahead of others you want to be at the top okay so that is not literal that is not pure language that is what literary okay but his eyes now this his here talks about what literary device personification are too far from the ground now i talked about the ground being what symbol for the lead earlier talking about how far removed they are from the giraffe now the giraffe is so tall up there as you can see here that i will really now know what is happening under the shrubs more like those in the grassroots are, are you getting me so that's it then when the zebra says uh, now the zebra saying as well that is also what personification it's his right okay you see it now personification to lead now the pack points to the duplicity of his stripes so the he's again that is another use of what personification i don't know if these things are clear so um uh these are major literary devices we have here metaphor symbolism 
consonants, alliteration, and uh, I think personification. Have I mentioned that before? Sinedo key, all right, in one situation here, just the poor, okay? Um, I, I think that'll be it. We have assonance proliferating this. Yes, assonance is the repetition of consonant sound in a line of poetry. Now, the thing is for assonance, irrespective of where it is uh, repeated, but it has to be in a line. It, it does not matter whether it's at the beginning of one, it's at the end of another. No. I don't know if you get me. <clears throat> so, um, I hope that's clear enough. So, um, if you look through, you'd see, I would like, that's a simple one. So, I don't know if anyone can point that out for us. Okay. I will be glad to get your answer. Uh, but let me say that consonance is also here, points, okay, and stripes, and he's, okay? So I think that's, that's, that's fine, okay? So please look through and give us um, uh, consonance. But for benefit of um, those who are totally new to literature, I think, let me just, um, let, should I just do it, right? Okay, so I'll just do one. Uh, one is should be okay. Yeah, it's majorly looking every. It's 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 too common, so you should see it everywhere. So the giraffe craves a place in front. Okay, so the in here and giraffe. Okay, uh, the uh, the short e sound is there. Giraffe and in front. Okay, in. So that's just assonance. So that's all. Um, these are figures of sounds. So I want to believe that that is clear enough. All right, the leader and the led by Neo Shundari. So let's go to the concluding slide, which is here. We have the elephant trudges into the power tussle, but its colleagues dread his trampling feet. Now, trudge, trudging is more like a sickly movement. So more like uh, someone is tired and you know, you're tiredly just moving with your last strength you're trying to carry yourself that's exactly what we mean by trudging so yet despite being weak and feeble these guys still come into power because they feel they have connection because they feel they have some backups all right now the colleagues are the ones that are in the picture of the lead now when you say colleagues people that are also the leaders all would be leaders so they want to contest but they are scared of the backings that this person has so that tells us what the case of uh leaders with godfatherism okay so if you now say theme of godfatherism you won't be wrong okay but you just need to explain that it says but its colleagues dread his trampling feet you know the word uh, feet there is not really about the normal leg it is talking about the weight that comes with the leg of an elephant so more like that is an imagery okay now this imagery also talks of uh uh sinedo key the same line here houses sinedo key because it's a trampling feet is it that the elephant's feet only does the trampling without the elephant itself being involved in it so that is also using the part of a thing to represent the whole of that thing. I hope that is clear. Okay. So then the he is here also is also what? Personification. All right. So, um, but you can see its colleagues. Now, why this is the right one that should go for elephant, but now he is here is not literally correct. Okay. So because it is literally used, it is actually a literary device, which is personification. Now, the what the what hog is too ugly, the rhino too riotous. This line tells of leaders or uh, that you know the people have nothing good to write about. But at the same time, it talks about the lead who are insatiable. Give them any leader, they will have something to complain about that leader. They don't want this, they don't want A, they don't want B, they don't want C, they don't want D. So who do you want? So that is why I said, uh, I, I love this poem for one thing. It does not, uh, you know, put the, 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 the support, you know, throw it with on the side of the citizens, the lead, to say, yes, you know, more 
commonly we see these um, poems talking about bad leadership, bad leadership, bad leadership. Nobody talks about the fact that the uh, followers or the led tend to have something to do too. All right. So in this case, it's a very unique poem. All right, because it's talking about the insatiability of the lead. That is another thematic preoccupation I think I've mentioned too now uh, in closer relations. Now, um, now the warthog is too ugly. This is imagery, the warthog. You know why? It is not giving some stories to back it up, more like the elephant trudges, blah, blah, blah. That gives you a, a, you know, a storyline that creates a picture in your head. That is symbolism. But now when it's just more like a word or a tag, and you're using it to represent the leaders there that is metaphor i don't know if, if that's clear so this is metaphoric uh the the warthog is too ugly the rhino too riotous so this explains uh the the rhino here is imagery for the leaders warthog imagery for the leaders okay but both lines are talking about insatiability of the lead in the choosing of leaders anyone you give them they'll complain okay so and the pack trashes around like a snake without a head need i say that rhino and uh, riotous are talking about what alliteration okay please let's take note of that okay and the pack trashes around like a snake without a head that tells us of what the use of simile okay use of simile in that these um uh what's it called the lead now are the packs now the pack being treated here talks about the lead saying they are now in a state of anarchy so if you now say theme of anarchy you use these lines to buttress it is that clear so uh because the leaders are like that the people reject their leader and they are doing anything they want they work however they want it so i don't know if that's clear enough to send us some message on the theme of what anarchy on the theme of lawlessness the same thing as anarchy all right so um that will be it and then that is the use of uh simile now to also achieve that okay a snake without a head in that regard it is very good that we just take note of um the simile used here so i think these are first use of simile in this poem let me just skip to say no there's no skipping now because these people are insatiable here the lead are insatiable and are now behaving anyhow there's a need for someone to come in all right so the sage that is the wise ones in the forest the forest a metaphor for the country okay where the people are okay so the forest the forest sage now is giving the advice the wise ones are speaking our need calls for a hybrid of habits now that is the situation in our country calls for what combination of attributes in our leader and even in the lead okay so we are looking at what um, here we have the <laughs> being um, repeated here in hybrid and habit okay uh, as alliteration okay the breed the e here and uh, i don't know and this habit okay the e here that's assonance okay i don't know if that's clear okay i think i'm just going to leave I'm, i won't talk about anything about alliteration anymore excuse me <clears throat> um so that, that 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 does it now what is the combination they are talking about a little bit a leader ought to be a little bit of a lion plus a little bit of a lamb so be a combination of these two be a lion be a lamb all right so that tells of what uh the advice of the forest sage but because there is no end of quotation mark here that tells what the sage said is not done okay tough a leader is meant to be tough like a tiger the tata there is alliteration actually i said i'm not going to say anything about alliteration so let's go tough like a tiger 
that is also simile please all right that's the second use of simile here okay compassionate like a doe that is the third use of simile okay tough like a tiger compassionate like a doe and the two put together that's juxtaposition hope that is clear so you want these two things to be in a leader you know a doe doe a deer a female deer let's leave that okay so uh transparent like a river that is let people know exactly how you're dealing let be, be be open to all don't have shady businesses but at the same time be mysterious like a lake let people not easily predict you all right don't be a leader that is easily taken all right more like what is a lake water surrounded by land you see it so you start asking how did this water get here let people not easily know your next move in in positive things anyway so be that person they will be wondering what is he up to now what surprise is this leader coming up with more like it external nations should not know the secret of your people of your country don't expose yourself you know more like it okay but at the same time be open so what does that tell you this is antithesis all right tough like a tiger compassionate like a doe that is what antithetical transparent like a river mysterious like a lake how would you be transparent and be mysterious antithesis all right so that's the literary device used there i hope that's clear enough so a leader who knows how to follow followers mindful of their right to lead that is paradoxical and we could also say antithetical a leader who knows how to follow this is highly if you ask me paradoxical why because it doesn't seem to make sense until you think a bit more about what it has said a leader who knows how to follow how should a leader know how to follow but if you now look at it very well for you to be a good leader you must have been a good follower all right so for you to understand paradox you need to explain all right and um, it's more like a senseless saying at the surface but it has sense after after thought all right so with after thought you definitely get the meaning of a paradox all right so paradox in here antithesis the uh literal um simile is here um personification is there synecdoche is there um uh, assonance we've talked about that alliteration we've talked about that so what else are we not saying we've also mentioned some literary devices uh some themes i beg your pardon in this text um very important that i let us know that this poem has 12 stanzas so by the time they ask you to comment on the text and now based on what we studied in levels of literary analysis we talked about form and structure all right the form of this poem is the form of what free verse what do we mean by free verse something that has no calculated rhythm or meter okay the meter is not regular when we say meter we're talking about uh, the number of uh, syllables in each line they are not the same all right and they don't follow the same stress pattern stress on stress on stress stress or something like that on stress on stress stress or stress stress on stress so it, you can't say they are they've got uh uh what's it say uh, what's it called iambic pentameter or trochaic pentameter or whatever whatever you can't say it's uh, uh, spondaic you can't say it's trochaic you can't say it's uh, iambic you can't say it's dactylic so what the what then is it it is free verse meaning each line is just free to run any it wants to is that clear so it's a free verse of 12 couplets the entire poem is written in 12 couplets that is couplet means a stanza of two lines all right where a stanza is made up of two lines that's a couplet and the couplet you can say it's heroic couplet it will be called the heroic couplet if the two lines have the same rhyme scheme all right so but then they don't have this uh, rhyme scheme so that means that makes it more of a free verse okay and uh, at the same time it gives us a picture of it as 
uh, okay, a couplet, just a couplet, not a heroic couplet. I hope that's clear enough. So um, that tells of the form and the structure of this poem. Okay, so um, I would like you to comment, okay, ask questions on any other thing. I don't intend to make this long, so it's about over 30 minutes already. So let us do the talking, ask your questions. I would really want to hear you, okay? Reach out through WhatsApp or every means possible. Uh, here you can get through to us on our email. Uh, we'll definitely be there. Or you could call, you could send message on, on WhatsApp and let us answer these questions, all right? Um, if you need more light to be shared on any aspect, okay, please let us talk about this, okay? So, um, from me to you, I would sing it. Esheri Kodara Esheri Kodara O Eni Ayekon Esheri Do it right, make it better. Do it right, make it better. When it is your turn, do it right. <laughs>